Andreas was one of the four demon gods who raked over demon woe but lost her body after being defeated by Lilith and Arena in the past. She is the merciless slayer who equally gives deaths to all those who don't worship her. She is featured in Vol 15 appearing to be one of the strongest assault force within the story mode and in today's video we are going to analyze if she's fit for the slayer's title. And let us start the video to analyze how worthy is Andreas potentially. Andreas possesses her spirit in Selene's body and Selene was an orphan from war who was about to be sacrificed by the cult worshipping Andreas in order to reincarnate her. She has been hiding her identity for a very long time until she was found by Lilith who was looking for the demon gods. After a long turmoil, Lilith suggested a contract for freedom in the future for the subordination of Andreas to defeat the invaders invading demon Vo. Being known to have a sky high pride, the other demon gods thought that Andreas would escape her current host and find a new body but she willingly signed the contract with Lilith stating that it would be troublesome to find a brand new host. Andreas stats ranking based on level 89 characters are first for attack replacing Bari to become the highest attack unit, second for HP and 69 for defense. Now her party buff is range damage plus 50% with skill damage plus 10% and weapon skill regen speed plus 6%. So her normal attack commands hunt allows her to swing a giant scythe to inflict range damage on the enemies. And on hit right she's able to create an ice crystal and the damage enemies defense is reduced by 20% for 3 seconds. So the Ice Crystal is one part of her kit which allows her to increase attack and defense in her special ability and the defense reduction from the normal attack is actually stackable with Tinia's defense reduction because Tinia's defense reduction is similar to Lilith where it's a Sigma type of defense reduction whereas Andra's defense reduction works a little bit like Coco's defense reduction. So you can actually put Coco and Tinia in one team and have massive defense reduction on the target. So that's one thing that is really good for Andreas. However, her normal attack swing is really slow and it has a semi melee range. So she's technically not a range attacker because her attack range is like two boxes or three boxes. So it's very hard for her to chase after the enemy if they are constantly on the run in the arena. And for the secondary ability Violation, it allows her to throw the ice crystal in front of her to do more damage. And this also allows her to form two ice crystals at the start of the battle with her being able to store a total of four ice crystals to shoot out at the enemy however for the numbers or the damage output for these ice crystals i'm not too sure because uh, no actual numbers was released in the statistics so i can't really confirm that and i haven't done enough experiment to conclude the number so i'll leave it to other pros to explore this part of her kit and her chain skill is cold death which creates a pillar of ice on the target to inflict 300% of DPS range damage. So it's a very straightforward skill, but it has a universal to down chain, which allows Andreas to fit into a lot of team setup and provides great flexibility in terms of team building. And lastly, her special ability, Bitter Core, allows her to increase her attack and defense by 30% for 5 seconds whenever there's 3 or more ice crystals formed behind her. Now, if you take a look at her EX weapon, the EX weapon provides her with a defensive buff, skill damage buff, as well as the weapon skill regen speed buff. So other than that, it also has a very high 10% critical chance while allowing her to do additional 25% additional DPS damage when the normal attack hits the target further than 2,000 away. And other than that, right, when there are 4 ice crystals behind her, it increases the damage of each ice crystal by 20%. So this um, 2,000 away thing most probably will be most efficient in PV settings where the targets are less mobile because you kind of want to like position yourself so that you're always about 2,000 away. It's a little bit hard to gauge but the third attack as well as the ice attack are most probably the ones that will benefit from it because it will always have more than 2,000 range if you're able to position yourself properly. So overall you can see that Andreas kit is a lot about damage defense reduction and even more damage so that's one thing about her really really good because she has one of the highest attack in the game and her skill damage piercing scream allows her to do 275 percent dps damage as she creates ice thorns to inflict range damage to the enemies so this skill has an eight percent regen time which is pretty average considering the rest of the heroes most heroes have around like seven to eight seconds weapon skill regen speed so you know nothing too spectacular but she's able to chain her opponent 
in two weapon skills if they do not really move too much and about three weapon skills if they try to like run around and dodge a bit of the damage takes. Now moving towards the Colosseum side, I'll personally say that Andreas is a pretty decent unit with the ranged party buff as well as her massive damage from the attack as well as a kit and a defense reduction to allow your teammate to do more damage on a specific target that is marked by her. However, two things that she's not that good uh, going for her, number one is obviously her attack range is really very short, right? She positions herself in a very vulnerable spot and dies pretty easily. So uh, that's one thing that is not so good in the Colosseum for her. And secondly, her attack swings are pretty uh, short range, right? So it doesn't hit a lot of targets all at the same time. She doesn't have a heal like Kamel and there's just a lot of earth units running around right Kamel specifically there's also a bit of earth teams running around and they're just way better for the range uh uh, range buff unit that is uh, just better than her in this position so she's definitely usable but she won't be the top pick especially with the current meta of things now moving towards the arena discussions i think andreas has a very powerful kit if she manages to hit her attacks because of her high damage potential However, she's very similar to Bari, being able to hit really hard, but being very immobile. And this means that she's easily kitable by longer range units or units with higher mobility simply, right? So that's one thing that's not so good about her. And another thing, I think she's very bad against summoner units as well, because she's affected by the slow, like the swing is affected by the targeting. And usually her attack will be redirected from the main unit to the summons if you're fighting against the likes of Noxia or even Ara. So that's my personal take when I try using her in the KR arena. And her ice crystals can also be dodged pretty easily if you're just constantly on the run. So the combination of all this makes it such that her controls within the arena is not very comfortable in my opinion. And yes, you can definitely make her work, but you probably need sufficient stats to deliver big decisive blows within arena itself. Now, different from her PvP aspects, I think Andreas is the new queen of PvE with multiple utility within her kit. So, she's able to perform in the various PvE game modes such as Raid, Defensive Co-op, Heaven Hole Tower, and even Camazon, depending on how you build your team and how you position her in the team itself. So, she's able to deliver massive damage while providing a defense debuff for the team. And she's also having a relatively universal kit which allows her to fit into various elemental teams and being a staff user means that you can easily find uh, epic stuff for her because you have fp you have kamel you have eva you have so many units with the various elemental stuff that you can throw it on andres and then slot her into different elemental range teams which makes it amazing for raid purposes and at the same time despite having a really slow attack animation her attack aoe is actually really big so having big damage and big OE allows her to clear contents which involves multiple enemies very easily. So she's probably going to be pretty good in role exploration if water is going to be a thing. And also defensive co-op if you want to clear through the maps really really quickly. And all in all, I think as long as the targets or the enemies that you're hitting, they are relatively less mobile. I think Andreas is going to be really good there because she's able to land all her debuffs, she's able to land all her attacks in order to maximize her full damage potential. Below are some reasons to pull or invest in Slayer's Andreas. So how worthy is Andreas potentially? She's 100% mass pool if you are into raid contents as the amount of boost she can provide is simply amazing, right? Her whole kit makes her a superb support unit which delivers massive damage herself. The only thing that differentiates her and Kamel at this point is that Kamel has way more heal, right? While having a little bit more utility on the range side and also having a more powerful weapon skill in my opinion but nonetheless Andreas is probably the new top PV unit that you want to pull for because of the massive damage boost potential that she can provide for your team so other than that she's also one of the four demon gods which is linked back to dungeon link which is Kakao's previous game so there's a bit of nostalgia there if you're somebody who have played their previous game as well so that's that going for her and that's pretty much it for this video thank you very much for watching do let me know down in the comment section below if you're pull for her or 
on her global release and do remember to like and subscribe in order to see more contents for the channel and i'll see you guys again in my next video bye guys